the Good Up Quilters Guild from Western Cape in South Africa as a program this year with a, a mystery quilt and for uh, the June delivery of the mystery quilt we will make a square in a square block and my suggestion for this block although it seems quite easy is that we use a paper base for it and what I use is a, a paperless uh, paper base method where you work on freezer paper and don't sew through the paper but next to the paper so in the end it's easy to just lift the freezer paper off and it's not the tearing of the paper. Uh, the method that I use I've initially learned from Judy Matheson uh, in a newer uh, edition of her book and also on her website she explained how you use the freezer paper I've added some things along the way like sewing with a sewing machine through several layers of freezer paper instead of printing on the freezer paper and in that way your um, uh, paper is also marked on both sides while if you just print it then it's only marked on one side so the perforation is really nice to get your pattern on uh, both sides. Some people like to use a vellum or a see-through paper, uh, but with a freezer paper, if it's perforated, you get the same uh, advantage that you can see on both sides. Okay, first of all, we prepare our fabrics and uh, we, we've cut the strips in the different widths. And now you need to cut a square from the red fabrics and uh, you will have eight squares whenever i cut squares i like to use the smaller square ruler rather than the long ruler and this uh, yellow fabric we cut and we can just neaten the edge first and we will cut it 9.5 centimeters or if you work in inches then whatever inches you need to cut it in and this fabric will be uh, then uh, cut in half uh, over both diagonals like that and once again like this and this also help if you have a directional fabric then you get the directions correctly but when you then use it in your project you must keep it in the correct orientation if they are like this you can just stack them and then the uh, blue fabric uh, was cut 8.5 centimeter and we cut it in squares of 8.5 and we will then uh, only cut it once diagonally. I use the line of the uh, ruler to make sure uh, that my cut is uh, correct but also if your square is square the cut will go through the two uh, corners. Then we prepare our paper. I have brown freezer paper. I got it from my brother from Canada and you can fold it accordion style to get your eight layers and this is now four layers and i fold it over so now i have eight layers and the waxy side is now in different directions so this doesn't matter for this type of symmetrical pattern but if the pattern isn't symmetrical you will need to um, cut it loose and have the wax side in one direction so we can um, just cut this a bit smaller so that we can see that the pattern cover the uh, freezer paper and it's also important when you print out the paper that you make sure you print the metric size or the inch size whichever uh, you are working in and also that the printer is set for actual size and not print as to fit because then it will be the wrong size. Then we will attach it to our paper with a stapler. Um, and 
I try to put it away from the line so that it isn't in my way when I start sewing on the paper. We will perforate the paper with a needle so we ne remove the top layer or um, the top thread. We won't have the top thread in. Some of the most modern big machines will not sew if there's not thread in. So you'll have to do it on an older model machine that are willing to sew without a top thread. You just start on any of the lines and we want to sew on all the lines inside. We can lower the stitch length a bit so that um, there are more holes in the paper and I am watching the uh, indent in the machine foot to make sure that I stay on the line um, that my perforation is exactly on the line and also there's not a stapler here I must make sure that my paper are smoothly on top so that I bring over the pattern accurately to the and here you can just turn it around or just turn this up and down the way. The needle will easily perforate eight layers if you need to, to perforate more than eight layers. Um, I would print the pattern um, more times so that I, uh, or you can reuse the same pattern, um, but I will only layer eight layers of um, freezer paper although if your freezer paper is thinner than mine the machine might still be happy to sew that so we sew on all the lines on the inside of the pattern the outer line we will cut so I sew that now Oops. if you make a mistake like, like I did there you can just go back and sew it correctly but then you must remember which line is the correct line okay so your papers will be perforated um, on all the sewing lines through all eight layers for the next step we will cut on the outside through all the layers and that's why i will print another pattern if i need more than eight layers because it just gives you more accuracy to cut exactly on the line and I use the same rotary cutter that I use for um, my fabric it is a uh, dust that that dull your scissor so um, I will just make sure that I blow off any paper dust that's on my rotary cutter So I'm cutting exactly on the line and there is my paper pattern. This is the outside seam line. So when we cover it with fabric, the fabric will um, have a, a seam allowance on the outside. We will show that later. We remove the staplers and that's easy to do with a stapler remover and then you have your layers and you can just lift it off they will slightly cling to each other because of the perforation so you must just make sure that you have single layers so the next step is then to take the middle square the square that will be in the middle the red and to position it on the freezer paper and then you will iron it and the wax of the freezer paper will melt and it will adhere to the freezer paper. Now my freezer paper is very thick and it needs a lot of heat to melt. So if I press on the front, it don't melt well enough. So what I do is I fold on this perforations so that I can position it correctly on my red square and make sure that there's also a seam allowance that uh, go past the uh, 
what will be the sewing line and then I press from the back okay. the wrong side of the fabric will face the freezer paper and the shiny side of the freezer paper will be on the fabric because the shiny side is the little it's the waxy part that will melt and cling to the to the um, fabric once that is done we will uh, again fold the paper on the perforated line and um, the it becomes more difficult to see the perforated line but luckily the paper want to fold there so you just um, take that fabric away and then it will fold on that line now we can start sewing and we will use the fold of the freezer paper as a guide of where to um, sew so now we first place this on the triangle uh, so that um, the sharp points go past on every side and the wonderful thing of this method is that one can lift the freezer paper and make sure that there's enough seam allowance on either side here so that it is positioned correctly under the paper that's with a conventional method if one don't oversize your fabric pieces you very often uh, um, have a piece that is too small. Now I've already rethread my machine so that I can sew. And what I will often do is to also chain piece my um, uh, paper piece uh, uh, pa uh, patterns. What you will do is you will just lift the machine foot and pull uh, the thread out a bit before you position the next um, piece under the, the foot and sew. You must make sure that you sew very uh, uh, near to the fabric, uh, to the paper edge, especially here at the corners, because where two corners meet, you will not get um, uh, the, uh, the correct um, uh, point if you don't look out for that that is the only drawback of this method is that you need to be uh, quite accurate next to the sewing line but that's in all patchwork the more accurate you are the uh, more accurate are your results so we place it right next to the um, paper and use that little guide in the foot to make sure that we sew right next to the paper. When I've uh, sewed all eight pieces, I can remove that. And I also cut the threads because the um, fabric sometimes uh, fall off and, uh, and we don't want um, that. So now we uh, uh, can, before we um, iron it or press it, we can, um, so on the other side so once again we will place the triangle in position and make sure that it um, go past on either side make sure that we are right next to and now if this happen you will just have to press down better and right down here that is the higher level of the paper that is responsible for the the fact that the um, the fabric sort of drifts so one must just keep it nice and tight there so once again make sure that it go past on both sides and is even lift the foot and pull it out if you have a knee lift you can use that which will make it easier and once again so there then you cut it loose and now you are ready to press it so that is just because of the paper that it sort of pull up but once it's pressed it will be flat and you can open it 
and press it onto the paper and with a thinner freezer paper it will stick I usually also press mine on the back side to get a better um, cling to the paper so once that sticks to the paper you will fold the paper away on the opposite sides and before I repeat the process the same process of sewing the two triangles on either side I will just trim this this is extra fabric that will go into the quilt in the end if you don't trim it at this stage so it's a good uh, thing to trim it as you go along okay sometimes the seam allowance is a bit wide and then it's difficult to know where to place the next uh, fabric so you can trim it um, I'm trimming it to more or less seven millimeters as that's the seam allowance that we work with so the last round for us is we've added the blue triangles and we get nice crisp points and that is because those uh, stitching lines of the previous round cross exactly at the edge of the paper which is now I our new sewing line so because it that is in the correct position you can sew right through that X and you can get a perfect point like we have here on the front so now we add our last triangle and make sure like always that the it's the uh, right side of the fabric and that go on the right side here and once again we make sure that it uh, the triangle points go past evenly on every side we can also uh, once again lift it up put our finger there to make sure that there's enough seam allowance and then sew right next to the paper and we carry on i've trimmed all the long ears off there so that we don't have extra bulk in our project and once again you lift and pull it out and start your new line a new sewing line on the other side of the seam because you want to knock that seam go right through that X and we can cut the pieces apart and if we open this we should have a nice crisp seam there and once again we can first add the triangle on the other side before we press it. Uh, once you are finished you can trim the seam allowance but we want a decent seam allowance uh, around the block on all the sides. Um, you will leave the paper onto the block till the end when it is sewn in the quilt on uh, all four sides uh, and then it is very easy to remove the paper because you don't have to tear it it's not sewn in any of the seam lines you can just easily uh, tear it off what is very important is that you check on every round that you um, your points are sharp and cross right next to the paper now here is one that don't cross next to the paper and we can fix it uh, I open the paper and you can see that I was here next to the paper but here I was quite far away and I actually want that cross to be here so that seam line is also a bit uh, uh, away from the paper so I will fold the paper out a bit and steal a bit there to get the the cross over there in the correct position because if it's not 
uh, it will get sewn in like this in onto the next block and you won't get a nice sharp point there.